Hey there, happy coders, and welcome to another Happy Coding Let's Code, where I just kind of mess around for an hour with whatever idea I have in my brain. Uh, I write some code and you can follow along or you can just watch and I'll post the code uh, in the in the comments below. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's where we are. Um, so over the last few days, I've been messing around with images a little bit. So I've got a few examples that deal with um, images in P5. So let me check those out real quick. So if you come to happycoding.io and come to our examples and go to our P5 section, uh, you know, I've thrown together a few, few examples over the last couple days and it's been pretty fun. I especially really love this pixel painter uh, sketch. This, this is something I've been playing with pretty much since I started creative coding. I've been doing this so, or some version of this program in pretty much every language I've, I've learned. Um, so it was fun to, to mess around with this, um, this idea and it, it creates these cool artifacts. So tonight I wanna do something kinda similar where I take an image and I do something for each pixel and then it hopefully creates an interesting animation or end result or, you know, maybe not. <laughs> we will find out. Um, but that's where my head's at. I, I actually don't know if what I'm going to try will end up being interesting, which is always part of the, I don't know, fun or stress, depending on how you look at it, of, of creative coding. But we're going we're gonna to work through it together. Um, okay, so... Uh, the only thing I've done so far is I've opened up a new sketch and I have um, uploaded a bunch of images to it. Um, the only reason I did that ahead of time was because it would probably be really annoying for you to watch me sit here and upload a bunch of images and then mess around with them. Um, so if you are coding along, then maybe create a new sketch by going to editor.p5js.org and then upload a few images by I think you can click this button here and then upload file and you'll have your image files over here and they'll be kind of easier to work with. Um, okay, so my idea is I want to uh, start with an image and then every frame I want to take two random pixels and I want to average them out. That's it, that's all I wanna do. Um, and over time, I'm hoping that the image will sort of, I don't know, blur into a single color, maybe? Uh, I don't know, we will see. <laughs> um, but that's my plan. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an image and I'm gonna probably need a, f a preload function. So um, let me check out the P5 reference. And I want like the load image function, which takes a an image name. Yeah. So, so this preload function will happen before setup, and it will make sure that any any like external resources you're loading will will be done loading before you try to do anything else in your sketch, which is which is super handy. So I'm going to start with I don't know images B. That's a that's a fun picture. B. I'm like sitting here complimenting my own photography. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, okay, so I've got my image. And what I could do is maybe I'll resize it. Um, so I think I can go to, maybe I'll go to like p5.image. Is that what it is? Yes, yes. So I think this has a resize function. Yeah, and I I think it does does it in place. I don't think I need to do an equals or anything. Yeah, so I do image dot resize to width and height so that I just make it the same width and height as my canvas so that I don't have to like do any conversions or, or any math or anything like that. Um, and then what I can do mm -mm -mm, is, let's just draw it for now, image, image, zero, zero, width, height. This width and height isn't super necessary right now, but it'll maybe come in handy later. We'll see. So I'm gonna hit run, and what I expect to happen is I should see my my beautiful B image drawn in my canvas. All right, cool. So now I have my image, and now I can do what I described, where I where I pick a random pixel, 
and I pick a different random pixel and I average them and I replace both with the average. That's, that's kind of where my head's at. Okay, so what do I want to do? Um, I want to do a couple things. First, I want to maybe get a random pixel. So let me just try something real quick. So let me say like const um, color one maybe. And for now, just to test things out, what I'm going to do is image.get and I'm going to say mouse x mouse y. And then instead of drawing this image, what I'm going to do is so like picture what this 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 image looks like. Uh, so there's yellow in the middle, green on the outside. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is say background color one. I'm just checking that this image.get function works the way I think it does. A few ways to do that, but this is throwaway code, so I'm not going to get too fancy with it. So right now it's at zero, zero. Mouse X, mouse Y is at zero, zero. So it's green. That makes sense. So I'm going to move my mouse around, and this should change. So the green is kind of on the outside. Yeah. Now as I move to the middle, it should turn yellow. Yeah, there you go. So there I'm like in my flower, and like my bee is up here. Okay. So this image.get function seems to work, okay. And if I wasn't, you know, sure about how to, like, which function to use, I could go to the P5 reference and read through that, and you know, eventually get to the the get function, which is here. One thing I'm not sure about is whether I need to do load pixels first. Um, I think I'll find out in a second because what I want to do is maybe, um, okay, here's what I want to do. So I've got color one and I'm going to just kind of ignore that for a second. Next, what I want to do is test the, the set function. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is say, look at this function. So image dot set and it takes a, like an X and a Y looks like. I don't know whether I use I and J, but that's okay. So X, Y, and then a color. I guess I could just look down here, X, Y, color. Okay, so I can do like con, or not const, I wanna do like image.set, maybe I'll do mouse X, mouse Y, and then I guess I'll just do like red. So like color R, G, B. And so what I would expect to happen is over time, as I move my mouse, I'll see like red pixels show up, I think. Or I'll get an error and we'll see, we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm kind of squinting and I'm not convinced that I see any red pixels when I move my mouse around. I'm not sure if that's because they're just too tiny or because they're not there. I think they're not there though. Yeah, okay. So I think maybe I do need to call this like image.loadpixels function first. It's like a set pixels function or anything like that. Like set pixels. No, there's not. Okay. So I think whenever I call set, I need to call load pixels first. I think I remember that from, from when I read through the reference. Okay, so now let's try it again and still no. Okay, let's t let's take another look at this um, this set function. Okay, so I'm gonna look at this example a little bit more carefully. Oh, it's update pixels, not set pixels. Okay, so when I call load pixels, then I change some pixels, and then I call update pixels. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I guess, you know, it's not smart enough to, to know that you've tried to set it. It needs to do some background processing or something that, um, that like actually sets the color of the, of the pixels in the image. So, okay, I think this, this was the other missing piece. So, okay, let me hit play and let me, yeah, there they are. Okay. So as always, I'm not sure if you can see that in the video. I think you probably can because it's kind of very contrasty, um, but you can kind of see the red pixels whenever I move my mouse. And so, okay, so now I've got a combination. I've got, I've got my image.get function working and I've got my image.set function working. And 
for fun, or to test one more thing, rather, both, it can be fun and testing something. Um, instead of saying mouse x here, what I'm gonna say is random width and random y. I'm doing this because I'm not sure if I need to um, floor the value. So random width, random height, are we getting red pixels? We are, we actually are. Okay, so the set function is smart enough to to like ignore decimal places. That's what I was checking there. Okay, cool. Mm, so what do I wanna do next? What I wanna do next is, <laughs> uh, get another color and then swap them. So what I'll do is maybe I'll say image.get random y, well, I guess I should have um, actually tested whether this takes decimal places or not, but whatever. So random width and random height. Random height, same kind of deal where I'm just getting a pixel, but now it's based on um, random x and y. I think what I'm going to do is say image.width and image.height just to make it a little bit more, I don't know, safe. And let's see, I'm dealing with a uh, very small screen real estate, but that that's good enough, I think. Um, and then I'll do something very similar for color too. And actually, I'm realizing that I'm going to need to, to store this X and Y because I want to know where I swapped them from. So, okay. So what I actually want to do is const x1 equals random image dot width and const uh, y1 equals random image dot height. Okay. Then I want to use that here. So x1, y1, and hey, that makes my line shorter so I can keep it on my line. That's cool. Um, so let's put it like that, and then I'll do something extremely similar for color two. So const x2 equals random um, image dot width, const y, oh my goodness, x2, y2 equals random image dot height, and then const color two equals image dot get x2, uh, y2. Okay, and then what I want to do is, so I've got x1 and I've got y1, and what I want to do is set that to color2, and I want to do the same thing, but in reverse, where I take x2, y2, and set that to y2, and set that to color1. So I'm taking a random pixel, say from, oh, I forgot to like turn this off, so it's just been turning redder and redder over time, that's funny. Um, so I take a random pixel, let's say from over here where it's green, and I take a random pixel, let's say over here where it's yellow, and, oh wait, I'm just swapping them now. Okay, so that's like very different from what I said I would do originally, but whatever. <laughs> uh, this could be fun too, actually. Um, and then I update the pixels, okay. So okay, I think just over time the the picture is going to get like blurrier um, or like less you know less clear. It's going to be less like a B. Um, so one thing that I know I'm going to want to play with, no matter whether I stick with this like swapping of pixels sketch or if I go with the um, the averaging, which I originally set out to do. I don't know why I went to down this random rabbit hole. Um, it was something that I thought of as I was talking earlier. I was like, oh, actually, instead of uh, doing the average, maybe I should swap them. And I think I just like mentally switched to that mode. Um, it's really hard to talk and think at the same time, I promise. Um, but I mean, it's kind of cool, and, but like, and the effect is kind of kind of neat, but it's going to take forever. We'll sit here like for an hour and then see the effect. So what I want to do is something that is, I, I don't know, it's kind of cheating. Um, so what I kind of want to do is say like frame rate 600 or something or 6,000. So the, by default it's 60. So I want to like just make it so much faster, um, but that won't work. So actually I can demonstrate that. So you would maybe think that doing this would make it 10 times faster. 
but it doesn't. And that's because I actually don't really know why, but um, I think it's a combination of like limitations in the browser and limitations on my computer and maybe even like the monitor or something, but like I, I can't set it to be above 60. 60 is actually the max. Uh, I'm guessing there's probably a way to disable that, but whatever. Um, I'm not sure if how I disable it on my computer will actually work on other computers and I, I don't, honestly don't feel like looking into it. Um, so what I do instead is I, I rename my draw function to something like swap pixel, something like that. And I then create a different draw function. And then I call the swap pixel function from inside draw, but I do it inside a for loop. So I say for let i equal zero, i is less than something like 100, i plus plus, and do, 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 do. so what I what I do is I like artificially increase the frame rate by calling this code a hundred times per frame and I think I might move some of this around but let's just see what happens so yeah you see it becomes a lot faster um, specifically it becomes a hundred times faster and I mean that's kind of cool. That's 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 kind of interesting. In fact, it might be more interesting than than what I actually end up doing. So I don't know. I really like that actually. <laughs> mm. I'm not sure, man. I, I love that so much. That's actually really interesting. Um, okay, while I'm here, what I'm going to do is move some of this code around because it's a little silly to draw a background when I just draw an image. It's a little silly to load these pixels like 100 times a frame because I only really need to do it once. And then to update the pixels and, and even to draw the image. So I think all of this can be back in draw. So what I'm saying is um, in draw, load the pixels, swap 100 of them. I guess technically it would be 200. Um, and then update the pixels because we've changed them. And then draw the image only after we're done with all that swapping. So you know, nothing will change, but it's just a little bit cleaner, I think. Um, and as this number gets bigger, I think it'll actually be more, more efficient because loading and updating I think is rather expensive but whatever um, so yeah I really like that actually so let's um, let's try a different image which is why I have all of these over here I really like playing with uh, them <laughs> once I once I have something working I really love uh, just messing around with different images So it starts out kind of slow. I could try increasing this even more. There's there's going to be diminishing returns when my computer just gets mad at me, but yeah, let's try that actually because it's pretty slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's cool. I'm actually really into that. Man, <laughs> I think that's cooler than my original idea of averaging them out. I was planning on like getting into like talking about some of the math behind um, behind averaging colors, but I'm not so sure. That's that's actually interesting, um, and this just looks really cool. So, all right, um, just to test test my my myself a little bit, um, I'm actually going to try. Um, I'm gonna to try to go with my original idea as well. So I'm gonna maybe just take this code where, what do I do? I get, I get the two colors and I swap them. So instead what I wanna do, is I'm gonna maybe rename this to average pixels. And yeah, I guess I should rename this to swap pixels because you're swapping two of them. Doesn't really matter, but whatever average pixels and so what I'm going to do 
is come up with a third color and then set both of them to that third color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, again, I think that might end up being less interesting than this, but we'll see. Um, so there are a few ways to do this. Um, I'm going to start out by doing it kind of manually. So I'm going to say, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to say like, um, so what I'm going to do is take the average of the red and the average of the green and the average of the blue components. So um, let's just do it. So I'm going to say like const color three equals, and then I'm going to say, I'm going to use the color function and I'm going to give it some parameters. Yeah, okay, I don't hate this. And what I'll do is, yeah, red of color one plus red of color two divided by two, which is the average of the two, the two components, the red component and the red component of color one and color two. So red, green, blue is really what I want to do. So green, green, blue, blue. And I'm a little nervous to tidy this code because P5 and I always disagree about where vertical white space should go, but let's see what it does. And not bad actually, okay. And then I think I just want to do this, color three. Color three. So I'm making a new color, which is the average of the two colors, and then I'm setting both of those pixels to that average, which was my original plan. But man, now that I see this, I think I'm gonna like this less. Um, and I guess I should actually call this function where I say average pixels instead. So same idea where in draw, I loop a bunch of times and I average two random pixels. Okay, here we go. Oh no, oh goodness. Something is terribly broken. I'm sure I did something silly. Looks like there's a problem loading your image. Oh, why? What? Oh, uh, because I changed the file name wrong. Okay. All right, let me stare at this for a minute. Hmm. It's okay, and I think if I hadn't seen the other way, I think I would like this, but I don't think I like it. <laughs> uh, let's try a couple different things. Let's see butterfly. Oh my goodness, butter, butter, butterfly, butterfly. So yeah, over time, the, the image like approaches the average color of, of every pixel. And it's kind of cool. I kind of like, um, there's like, a, a, I don't know, a few seconds there where it's, it's kind of like almost a solid color, but more of like a texture. So like the butterfly eventually goes away, but there are still in, there's still enough variety in the pixels that it kind of looks like, I don't know, sandpaper. So like now, I think that looks really cool. I think that could be a cool artifact, but then it kind of gets boring and like now it's just one solid color and that's, that's a little less interesting to me. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I like the I like the texture, but meh. I don't I don't think I love the 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 ending effect of it all. Um, so I don't know. I think you can kind of go back and forth between like averaging the pixels and swapping the pixels. I think what I'll actually end up doing is maybe I'll just leave both in and you know let leave that up to you know, you to play around and, you know, which one do you like better or which one do you think would be an interesting piece to a larger project or like based on the images that you have, which do you think would, um, you know, be more interesting. Um, for me, I think I like this. I think it's kind of trippy and 
I don't really know what it looks like, but I don't know. It's kind of outer spacey and, and just kind of neat. Um, so I think this is what I would go with, um, but it's, it's always down to personal preference. That's kind of the, the creative aspect of the creative coding. So now I'm just going to spend the next hour and a half playing with different images. Just kidding. I will try not to do that. Um, I think this 1000 is a little fast now. You know, that's one of the one of the parameters you can play with. Um, another parameter that you can play with is so I'm resizing the image to be the same width and height as my canvas. I think based on how I did this, uh, we'll see. Uh, I think I can change these numbers. So I think what I can do is something like 100, 100, like make it smaller than the canvas. But because I am stretching the image here. So no matter what the actual size of the image is, I stretch it here. Um, and because I'm using image.width and image.height rather than canvas width and canvas height, I think it'll just kind of work magically. I think it'll be pixelated, but I think it'll work. So let's hit run and see how, well, now I definitely need to slow it down. So let's slow this down like just a one, which is as if we didn't have the for loop at all and just called it once, but whatever. Um, yeah, so you can see that the, the the image starts out like already pixelated, um, and then each pixel is is like pretty visible. Um, it's kind of blurry though, which I think comes down to no smooth, or you know the default of smooth. And the other night I fought with no smooth for like two hours, and I still haven't posted that video because it's not pretty. But I think it'll work with a, with it with an image. Yeah, okay, cool. So now it's like quite a lot, like quite a bit more like bricky and, and pixelated, which I actually like. But again, that's one of those things you could you could play with and it comes down to personal preference. So I don't know, now this one is a little too too slow for me. Seems like a good sweet spot. So yeah, I mean I, I like that. I think that's really cool. And like what you can do is like record a GIF of this and, and post it as an animation. That's, that's what I tend to do. I tend to put these up on Twitter and up on Happy Coding. So like back here, what I did was just record this as a GIF, um, you know, behind the scenes. Like if, if you're not sure how to do that, I, I do it in a really like manual way, which is just to use something called screen to GIF, where I can just pop this up and record something on my screen. And that's how I do it. Um, but there's probably other ways to do it um, and probably different ways to do it on different operating systems. Anyway, um, that's what I'll probably do. I'll probably post a few of these as GIFs and that'll be kind of the, the actual output of the program, more so than the actual code. But I'll post the code as well for you all to play with. Yeah, I can just sit here and watch it. Um, so let's just try a couple things. I kind of want to play around with like, what if this is really small? <laughs> yeah, it just starts out like you can't you can't even tell what it is. Uh, can we tell it what, what a B is if it's um? No, nah. <laughs> I mean it's kind of fun, but um, it's it's kind of weird because like one of those is like the bee's eye, and it's just like walking around the screen. All right, that's creepy. <laughs> um, Let's see. So I, I mean, I could just keep playing, but I'm gonna I'm gonna prevent myself from doing that. I'm gonna maybe play with like tree one. That'll be the last one I play with. Oh, whoops. Uh, let me let me put this back to width and height because I think that's what I'm I'm gonna stick with. And let me put this back up to like a hundred. I'm just gonna sit here and watch it for a minute. I think. Yeah, maybe. I think maybe now 100 is too small. 1000 was a little too fast, so I'll cut the, dis the, the difference and go right in the middle. Yeah, it feels okay. Um, I should probably upload a couple different images because I've been using these same few images for a couple years now because like I just keep duplicating the same sketch. Um, and you know I've taken a bunch of pictures in that time. So I kind of want to play with that idea. Um, 
maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll actually show how to do that. Well, it's going to get weird. Uh, so bear with me. What do I want to do? Mm, okay, I was tempted to go to like my own personal like photos website, but that feels a little bit weird. Um, so instead, what I'll do is I'll Google like a cat picture, and maybe I'll go to Wikipedia and uh, I'll find a picture that looks kind of interesting. That one's kind of cool, and I'm going to like right click here and find like copy image address and if this ends in like a dot jpeg then i can use it well it's not the only thing that needs to be true but like that's what's one thing that needs to be true so let me try this so i'm going to say like image equals load image and then i'm going to paste that url in and we're going to see what happens yeah the, the image didn't start out as square, so it's a little squished, but you could crop it or, or just find a square image. And yeah, I really like that. I really like that effect. Okay, so I've shown you a couple different things you can play with. You can load different images either by uploading them or finding the, the URL here. You could play with the size of the image. So I've just set it to the width and height of my canvas, but you can make it smaller so it's pixelated. Uh, making it larger, I don't think will end up being very interesting, but maybe it will. I don't know. Let's find out. So let me maybe get rid of this stretchy kitty and let me go back to, I don't know, butterfly was fine. And I don't think anything interesting will happen if it's bigger. Yeah, it'll just kind of it like scales back down anyway. So I don't think it'll be much different than if it was the same size of the canvas, but you can make it smaller so that it's pixelated. That's, that's an option. Um, you can also play with this number, so make it either faster or slower. Um, and obviously you can change this back to average pixels instead of swap pixels, but I think I ended up liking swap pixels more. Um, another thing you can play with, which is what I actually originally sat down to talk about, <laughs> was uh, the way I'm averaging these colors is a little goofy, and I'm not sure it's the right way to do it. Um, so there's a couple other things you can play with. There's the lerp color function, which might actually end up doing the same thing, but I don't actually know. So that was one, one thing I was gonna play with. Um, the other thing you can play with is something called sum of squares, average color sum of squares. And yeah, this, this uh, article was super helpful to me back a couple years ago where I was playing with something related to colors. Um, and it gives you code down here at the bottom here, which, which you could play with. And I think what I'll actually do is maybe I'll turn that into a separate video because um, I, I ended up going down this, this other rabbit hole and ended up liking this rabbit hole more. <laughs> but if you're, if you're feeling antsy or if you're feeling interested in like the, the, the averaging of colors, then that might be a thing to do. Um, this while I'm here because color three is not a great variable name so I'm setting it to the average color but whatever um, okay yeah I'm really into that uh, so I don't know, this was maybe an interesting example of how creative coding sometimes goes. I sat down with one goal, which was averaging the colors out, and through mostly a mistake, honestly, um, I stumbled upon this kind of interesting uh, other thing, which was swapping the pixels instead of averaging them, and I ended up liking it more. And so I stuck with it. And I guess it's like the Bob Ross thing of like, there's no such thing as a accident. It's just like happy little trees or whatever. Like if you make a mistake, it's just a tree. Um, so yeah, this is a, a happy accident, I will call it. And um, instead of a tree, it's this weird trippy, uh, kind of disturbing pattern of a beautiful butterfly disintegrating into the cosmos or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I, I really like the, the, the effect that, that 
we we found. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully that was interesting, but if not, at least you have some code that you can play with and make it make it interesting to you. Um, so if you do play with the code, or if you come up with a different kind of twist on it, or if you just have a question, uh, please don't hesitate to either post a comment down below, or better yet, come to happycoding.io and then click over here to the forum. This is where I hang out. So if you want to say hi, this is the best place to reach me. Um, and I would love to hear from you. But for now, I think I'm pretty happy with this. So I will say thank you so much for watching. Have a great night. And as always, of course, happy coding.